And you're welcome to another episode of Analyze This. Uh, my name is Tunji Andrews, and with me on the show, as usual, is the beautiful... Honey Ogunde. So we're going to be talking about jobs in, in Nigeria, and basically the fact that... Um, I mean, the first question on my mind is, are jobs really scarce? Because I, I generally think it's not jobs that are missing, it's the type of jobs that people want. But we're going to be going into the analysis of jobs, which, job, which uh, sectors are still hiring, which sectors are not hiring as they used to before, and basically open your thoughts into, I mean, if you, honey's hiring. <laughs> We're always hiring. We're always looking for really smart people. Uh, at Fashwa, it's like a big problem. If you're trying to build a global company that can scale, mm -hmm. um, you definitely need brains in, in new industries, you know, from things like developers to buyers to designers. So, um, but it's always, it's sometimes difficult to find good people. The truth um, is, in Nigeria, there's, 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 the moment we're in is the moment where we have the least level of skill in our labor market, which is scary. But this, ironically, these people want the biggest amount of money. So it's a problem. Yeah, well, everybody always wants, like, lots of money, right? But I think the thing is also finding, matching people, finding the right people for the yeah. right jobs. So I've had instances where I've hired someone, and it's not necessarily that they're bad at that role, or they're bad at that role, but, you know, so, they have other skills which might lend itself better mm -hmm. to, you know, other, another other position. Areas. And it's sort of having the patience, and that's the conversation I always have, it's like, you know, for a startup, it can be quite difficult. You I mean, SME, it's not like you have all the leeway in the world to work specifically yeah. with someone for like a whole year if they're not ramping up very quickly. I typically like quick learners. I want people who can get up to speed, who can perform in multiple roles at the same time. Uh, and sometimes, you, especially if you get people fresh out of university, they don't necessarily have those skills that you need on day one. Mm -hmm. So you as an employer have to invest a lot in training and development um etc just to get you know get the right kind of people that you but, but how do you do that though because if you're going to invest in the development of that person then you, there has to be a balance with how much you're paying the person with knowing that i'm going to develop you yeah. as against you're already developed so i'm going to pay you better yeah. or you're not so developed so i'll pay you little then i'll use the rest to you know develop you to the standard i want yeah and by the time you develop the person is the person thinking of moving to the next startup of course that's gonna happen i mean when you develop people naturally um they're going to leave in some <laughs> cases but what you want to do is build a company and build a culture that they feel like they can be part of so they yeah. feel, people feel like they're part of something that's bigger than just a paycheck mm -hmm. and i think in terms of payments i mean there's what we call sort of market rates right so every country you can't expect to come from the uk and i see why I, I was earning x in the uk so now multiplied by four six five and that's how much <laughs> it doesn't quite work like that. And I know this because when I came back as well, you know, there's market rates for different positions. Yeah. So if you're starting as an intern, there's a typical market rate. And I'm typically checking to make sure that we're around in and around market rate. But the, I think the, the truth is when you're joining a startup, sometimes you will accept a position that will pay you less than market rate, but you'll be hopefully getting more development and more experience that you'll get at sort of a bigger corporation and that will allow you possibly to be able to make the shift when it's time right there is the issue of if i will pay you i expect skill right yeah. i expect you to be able to do what i want you to do so for instance you say you have an mba and i say write a proposal yeah. i don't expect to put you through writing the proposal again because you said you have an mba so you should but the general context is if i know i'm going to have to train you then I won't pay you as much as someone who's trained and properly experienced. And that experience sometimes comes from working. But will you pay them market rate? So would you? So there's a market Market perception. rate is relative. No, there's typically market rates depending on, like a manager earns X amount. There's an average amount that a manager who has four level of experience with a BSc degree is earning in Nigeria. There's a rate for that. So I think the conversation is, are you paying the person in and around that or are you paying them under that or above that? Because you mm. don't sort of pick the salary out from the sky. At least I hope you don't. I do, I do. <laughs> no, 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 because the thought for me is usually, um, I, I, we live in a situation, uh, in a world where, except of course you need to see the person on a regular basis, the person can work remotely. Okay, yeah. um, and there are apps where, you, you know, those kind of things are monitored. So there's, there's working is flexible these days, right? Yeah. Working is flexible these days. I, I have a few people that um, I, I pay different things to do different things for me. And I, I, some of them I don't even know and I've never met. Right. Do you understand? So it's, it's, you just pay for that service and you keep them on the retainership or some, something like that. So, I mean, work, 
is relative, right? Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I definitely agree with you. Like, the job economy is changing. You have a whole freelance economy out there now. You can mm -hmm. have a developer working for you and you've never met. The person can be located halfway around the world. Not every, like, employee of yours has to be sitting in your office physically and doing yeah. the work, right? So, and also for the um, people who, Nigerians abroad, who are thinking of coming back, and, and, you know, usually they always want to make sure that the job is waiting for them right. before they cross over. Um, and I get a lot of messages like that. It, it really rarely happens like that. It rarely happens that the job is waiting for you. And um, also you need to understand that we don't pay the same things. Like right, the, sure. You know, this, this, the standards of work is different. I'm just trying to break, break it down so that you, you understand that, you know. So what would you advise? Just come back with no job? If you want to come back, if coming back is the issue, then come back. No, I, I would not do that. You don't necessarily have to come. You might join a platform, see what jobs are available, like, you know, like a job man or whatever. And you're getting interviews. You can have interviews remotely via Skype. Um, and you might get a job offer that way. I'm, I'm, I'm eager now to get our guest on because I want to ask him if um, people hire remotely these days. You know, I can hire you via Skype in Nigeria or Nigerian CEO. Yeah. That he's 60, that probably Let's doesn't know how to use Skype. All right, so... That is so... <laughs> age, age <laughs> just... So uh, um, we have with us on the set, um, he used to be my friend until one of those tech giants called his name. And since then, we don't see again, but thank God he has, uh, mm. he's on the set with us. So um, we have with us on the show, um, Lekon from Jobberman, and he's going to basically be telling us how the job market is. Welcome to the show, guys. Okay. Thank you very much, Tunji. Hi, Oni. Hi, it's awesome to have you here. Thank Big you. Fan of Jobberman. Yeah. Thank so you. the question uh, we're we were asking, arguing about. Yeah, do people hire remotely? Now, put in mind that I said 60-year-olds. and No, no, no. Don't be trying to give yourself some How slack. many 60-year-old CEOs, CEOs are CEO there? Have, actually. I like <laughs> you already. Tell us. So do people hire yeah, remotely? Is this possible? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people do. Um, and Did you hear that, Tunji? Say it louder for those in the back. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, um, I mean, as part of what I do, I actually help fill positions across Africa. Right. And, you know, you also have foreign companies that want to hire in Nigeria or mm -hmm. Kenya or Tanzania, whatever it is, anywhere in Africa. And initially, the first conversation is, is typically over oh. Skype or, okay. or um, you know, any, any communication. Google Hangouts. Uh, yeah, Google Hangouts, any communication platform, um, you know, where they have the interview. Now, depending on the, on the role and um, how strategic it is, um, if it's the lead role, more often than not, they fly down, you know, to have like the final interview. Mm. Um, but the first initial set of interviews all up to like the final interview mm. is typically um, done over, um, you know, Google Hangout or Skype or yeah. maybe not WhatsApp for now. Yeah, yeah not what, yeah, but probably coming soon. <laughs> yeah, probably coming <laughs> so, soon. So, I mean, um, we, I, I know that uh, Jobberman tends to churn out data. You guys have some collaboration with National Bureau of Statistics yeah, on producing uh, job numbers, uh, online job employment numbers. So, who is hiring? I mean, uh, where are the jobs most tilting towards? Who is hiring more? Who is hiring less? Um, I know back around 2006, 2007, the, the job of choice and the sector hiring the most, uh, seemingly then, was the banking sector. Yes. Is it still the same way now? Um, I, I think companies typically now hire irrespective of whatever yeah, you study. Yeah, yeah, just more um, for smart. Yeah, so it's it's whether you're well smart, but that can be defined defined in different. In, you know, in different mm -hmm. ways. Um, but in terms of um, you know um, the 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 industry that seems to be snapping up a lot of graduates, I would say. Um, while it's not an industry, but it's really around the SME, you know, the, um, yeah, yeah. the, the, the startups, I'd, I'd say, you know, um, so for one, you know, they're looking for millennials. Number two, um, they're looking for guys that are, that are flexible, um, right. well rounded, um, tech savvy. you know, um, tech savvy. They're looking for a guy that can, you know, sweep today and tomorrow carry bricks. Mm -hmm. Um, they can for also a go for a CEO meeting, right? And, yeah. and go for a CEO <laughs> meeting. Um, so. Is there a skill shortage we're seeing with graduates? Like, I heard recently that people who are taught programming or studying computer science are still writing like code on paper, for example, in Nigerian University. Are we seeing like a skill shortage um, at all in which industries and what do you think can be done about that? Like, are, are university courses tailored to what jobs people are doing today? Okay, so do we have skill so um, shortage in Nigeria? The answer is yes. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, the unfortunate thing again is that you know the market is fast becoming global. Right. Um, mm. So you have guys being hired from Nigeria to other countries, um, even within Africa and you know Europe. Um, the the third thing again is um, you know the schools. Um, are, you know f you know just to to pick my words carefully. Um, are also not um, aligning with their, what is you know, happening, what, what is happening in, in the market. I remember one of my professors telling me that um, we're not meant to we're not meant to teach you, um, you know, how to program or, or teach you a particular programming language. We're meant to teach you, you know, the general programming language. Then you pick whatever you want and you develop on it. But also the school is already failing or has been yeah. failing consistently on even how to teach graduates on how to think, how to mm -hmm. approach problems, how to solve problems, um, even the basic soft skills. And I, I mean, I, I'll give it lightly to the private universities, to be honest. Right. You know, they've, they've done like quite a lot of good job. Um, you see a lot of them, you know, partner with um, some of these finishing schools, right. um, mm -hmm. you know, to kind of take their graduates towards the end yeah. of the year yeah. and, um, you know, and polish them and make them better. And these are the guys that these graduates are the ones that are now becoming very, very attractive mm -hmm. to, to, the market. To, yeah. to, to the market. Yeah. I think I, I sorry, I, but I was just going to say that 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 ability to sort of problem solve. Yeah, I think that was what like I was going to say. Yeah. Like, yes. I don't necessarily hire for um, sort of what you studied. Mm -hmm. It's more for like, you know, if whatever you chose, and you yes. did it well, you graduated yes. with a good degree, but just being able to problem solve. Like I always say this in my office, if there's a problem, I want you to come with me with solutions. solutions. Don't yeah. just report the problem. I, okay. I, I think. I I think what, what, the, what the shift in the market has been is that prior to now, the market has looked for uh, uh, professionals in specific areas. So I want a cup maker. Yes. You know, right. he must be a professional cup maker. As against now, what, what everybody's looking for is aptitude. How intelligent is he or right. her or her feet? Can, yeah. can the person be able to manage situations without me being yeah. there? So mm -hmm. I think that's that's the general um, Yeah, and I think switch. in terms of just choosing like what you study now, my advice, at least with my kids and people who I mentor, is just study something that you're good at, you're interested in, you can finish with a good degree. Don't, if you know that you're someone inclined to the arts, don't go out and study like science and finish with the third in that because nobody's going to want to employ mm -hmm, you. Mm -hmm. Rather, just study whatever it thinks you, you know, you can really perform well in because that ultimately is what is important these days. Um, the dichotomy though. Um, hey, big word, Oga in the house. Give us dichotomy. Let's go. An oil expert. Yes. You know, the problem now is that I, I've just lost my thought. Anyways. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way. You know, what, what the word is too big. It's very yeah. easy it to, you know, your yeah, your brain, even your brain is like, oh God, calm down with this. There, there was the issue between, um, like, back in the day, um, states, federal universities, um, now it's becoming Nigerian universities, abroad, uh, foreign universities. How much of that is, you know, still playing out in, in jobs being taken up on, on from their websites? Yeah. yeah. To be honest, um, we're seeing less of that. Um, mm. Yeah, we're seeing less of, less of that now. Um, there is um, actually another angle to it. Um, so the higher you go, um, there is a chance that, you know, if you've had some foreign exposure, that would really count. Right. Now, it might not be academics. Uh, it might not be you going to school. Yeah, yeah. But, um, and, and come to think of it, like, if you just kind of put your mind as, uh, you know, like an entrepreneur or, you know, you run a company. Global you've scaled, like exactly, you've scaled your company to a particular level. Mm -hmm. um, you're trying to compete or you want your company positioned as a global company and the only set of people, so to speak, that can actually infuse those kind of ideas and knowledge are people that have had exposure with this type of, of companies. Company. So um, you, you want, you, you see employers saying that, you know, I, I need someone that has done, even if it's a year, working with um, a foreign company or, yeah. or, or something yeah. or something. And I think that's what also brings us to the point about experience and yeah. internships. I think that that's a really important part of people getting um, getting an edge off over even when you're looking at graduate roles. So yeah. I will always prioritize people who have experience, especially in the sector yes. that, um, that they want to get into. And I think how graduates perform when they're even interning is really important. Sometimes we have graduates come through or interns and you see people are not performing to their highest role, maybe because the role they feel like, oh, it's not being paid well but i think if you if you can really make yourself stand out during an internship it really stands you in good stead not only like That's for the experience the you gain but mm -hmm. also like just the recommendation like yeah, if true. someone will be willing to recommend true. you going forward true. i think the, the the most important thing and, and i probably have said it before you could s s basically sleep through your 20s and wake up 
33 and still catch up in fact surpass the person that had been trying to chase money all the while so i advise when you're when you just left school or you're fresh out of school you know invest. take time invest in Get gaining experience, experience because there's a point where you now dictate how much you want you know at yeah. that point it's not the person saying uh well, this is what we want to pay you it's a case of how much do you want and yeah. they're begging you please you know, we don't have that That's kind of what's money. Please to you take right this now. out. You know, like I was telling you, I, the, you know, when companies approach me now, I'm now talking about I want equity in your business. I I don't want to get paid. You big know? boys, and, and that is thing. where you get to at some point where you know that yeah, your skill has now appreciated to a point where you it's can't work for somebody anymore. Yeah. It's not just about money anymore. It's about something bigger. So you know, 21 year old, 22 year olds got experience. Before you go, I yes. want to do some quick fire questions with you on the job market. So where is, you know, the number one place that people want to work right now? Like, is there a company? Uh, I know you do normally a survey. Um, for one, um, in terms of um, the company that has, the, the number one company that has a, like a local background yeah. um, that people want to work for yes. is GT Bank. Right, okay. You know, um, but you have a lot, GT is in the top 10. Right. However, you know, you have other multinationals kind of filling up the, between okay. the one to nine. So which sector pays the most? I'm always about the money. I think I think I think tech plays pays a lot now. Um, mm. so, so there's it, it depends on the way you look at it because yes. I'm, I'm a lot of numbers and you know analysis running through my head. So the first is um, at the graduate level. Yeah. Um, you oh, see, at the graduate level, yeah. At the graduate level, you see um, maybe oil and gas actually paying a lot more than tech. Okay. Right, because people come in at um, you know like yeah very entry low, level yeah. entry level very low figures, um, but as you grow, right, and if you assume that the oh, guy in okay, oil and this gas is surpasses, is better yeah. and the um, and the and the guy in tech is also is also good, you realize that quickly the guy in tech tends to move a lot faster than the guy, than in, the oil guy in oil and gas again it, it it this this has a lot to do with you know how you start yeah how you move yeah um your focus and yeah. your focus and who you pitch your tent with yeah mm -hmm. right if you pitch your tent with let's say a tech a company growing, yeah. that is not as fast growing you might find yourself in the wrong place um a safe haven i would say is still the 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 whole company right. mm -hmm. but before we round up i'm, I'm sorry I'm, I'm jumping i i, I want to chip in something yeah. that is fast becoming a currency right. you know in um in nigeria and i think you know the word is just integrity mm. Mm. right and this cuts across um from fresh graduate intern to sea level mm. right um we've had a lot of um instances where People have been dropped because of that, you know. And so, what of, specifically do you mean? People are not being completely honest in their resume. Yeah, shady. Or? No, no. It's, it really has um, very little to do with um, you know your, your resume, right? Yeah. Um, it has to do with like you know what you do on a day to day. Yeah. Um, as a prof, as a yeah, as your footprint as a, as a professional. Your social right? media interaction. Yeah. Social media, but really more in terms of the dealings, right? So yeah. this is what happens now. Because people do reference checks, right? And they go and ask Their reference who they checks. Work the industry, no matter how you're looking at it, is getting a lot smaller and smaller by the day. Yeah. And people right? can easily because ask your former boss, how was he? How was it? People can ask people around you. There's LinkedIn as well, right? You know, yeah, yeah, you know, so you have you've had a lot of people that are professionals in Nigeria actually go to other countries, you know, because yeah. of the recession so you have very very few um skills mm. um skills left right yeah. but even at that you realize that you know um okay so let me give you an instance at least there are like a couple of individuals flashing in my head right that have integrity issues and are very good right wow. and so give us like an example like so, what happens like so someone gets hired in a job or the company is considering a candidate and for for what reason they do a check and the person fails or what, how does this how does this play out? Okay, so so basically, um, you know, typically the way a company would do a check more often than not is, you know, they would call your your former boss uh, yeah. or call someone that you've dropped the name, you know, yeah. just to ask, yeah. uh, and you know, probably now go to for a police report that really doesn't work, um, and they, they don't see anything, right? Because yeah. companies tend to just say, oh, you worked with us, and they just leave it that way, yeah. right? However, what happens now is like they just call. A friend and call you know people in the industry that you're not related to yeah. and they say do you know blah, blah, blah. Andrew? Okay. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, like, um, you know, I'm sorry. Yeah, don't it's let me okay just you. Let me just. Uh, <laughs> Tunji Andrews, you know, a rapper. I don't understand where this shit. And then, and then it's up <laughs> to start telling stories of the things that you have done. Yes, and you know, I yeah, get you know, I get that um, feedback. But what I've realized is for guys that, you know, have kind of come out pretty clean. Yeah. Um, you see a lot of role kind of chasing them. Like, right. mm. you know, this guy is talking to them, that guy is talking to them. Mm. Your employer is telling you, you know what, I want that guy. Right. See, I'm going to give you your percentage or whatever you want to hurt, your, your fees, whatever your fee yeah. is. But I, know, want but I want that guy. I want that guy. Go mm. and get that guy. And by the time you look at it back and forth, you just realize that, okay, integrity. it is because yeah. this okay. guy has, that is, as you go higher though, that this guy has a level of integrity, integrity of that and, and character that, you know, employers are willing to pay top dollar for. Right. Mm. That's awesome. Awesome nugget to, to Thank you very much. Thank you, Leko. Thank you so much for Thank coming for on. I've me. learned a ton about the job market Thank you. and, you know, what's going on out there. And you guys, you heard it here first. Integrity is really key. And this goes beyond, you know, how you package yourself. It's also about how you live your life on the day to day in your professional job. Um, and guys, if you want to talk more about the job market in Nigeria, how are you finding it? How is it dealing with you? How is it treating you well? Um, you know, the hashtag to use is analyze this. And you can also uh, reach us at Indani TV. If you want to talk to me personally, you can slide in my DMs or you can send me a message at Honey Ogundei on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, everywhere, you know, that you go to social media platform. Or if not, if you also want to talk to Old Man Tunji, he's available on... At Tunji Andrews, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I'm just going to ignore what she just said. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to ignore it. <laughs> And Lego, tell us how we can reach you and also jump around. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm quite heavy on, um, on Twitter. Okay. Um, you can reach me um, at Lego Talks. Um, Instagram, that's for family. Um, Jobberman, <laughs> it's um, at jobberman.com. Jobberman.com. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. It's been another fun episode. See you guys next time.